it's Maria, and today I'm going to tell you all about EcoBricks. I'm not going to lie, I'm not an expert at this. I just started EcoBricking, but I'm going to tell you guys all that I know, and I'm going to do my best and try to explain what it is, what it's used for, and what is the benefit of it. So far, I have made two EcoBricks. They are very solid. They, this one is 512 grams and this one is 511 grams. And they are very, very sturdy. As you can see, I like this one. It's, it's really cool. Look at it. Look how cool my eco brick is. Okay, so what exactly is an eco brick? Eco bricks are plastic bottles filled with clean and dry plastics. What is the use for them? They can be used anywhere from building flower beds furniture, all the way to the bases to build a house. And finally, what is the benefit of them? They reduce the amount of plastic that goes into the landfill. Now, it doesn't look like much, but you guys would not believe how much plastic is in here. Recently, I saw a girl on TikTok that actually took out the stuff from her eco brick. If I can find her clip, I will insert it here, but it was incredible and in how much plastic can fit in one of these bottles. I can't even imagine how much plastic is in here. Like I know it's a lot because it's taken me a long time to fill this up, but I think it's totally worth it. For me, it's fun. I know there's going to be people that say it's a waste of time. There's no point to it, but to me, there's a point. All of this plastic that would have gone into the trash, into the landfill, is not going there anymore. It will now go... It will now go to a good cause. Let's get started. How to make an eco brick. First, you're going to need a bottle. I am using these from Bottle House Farms because we love this kind of juice. And every time I buy it, I just save the bottle, wash it real well, make sure it's nice and dry. Is it dry? Yes, it's dry. And it's ready to go. Also, be sure to remove any labels that are on the bottle. I actually do this later because the labels on this bottle are plastic. There are some labels that are paper, so those paper ones you can just throw away, but after starting the eco brick, then I take off the sticker and just stuff it in there along with the rest of the plastics. I apologize if you can hear the gardeners outside. The whole morning was very quiet, and of course as soon as I start recording, they're here. But if you can't hear them, then great. Okay, so after you have your clean bottle, you're going to need plastics, single-use plastics. So here I have things such as plastic bags from stores, pieces of my cat's cat food, candy wrappers, trail mix wrappers, even some straws. All of this plastic has taken me a while to collect. Usually I don't get plastic bags from stores, but the occasional time I don't have my reusable bags with me, so I sometimes if I have too much stuff, I grab a bag with me. If I can carry it in my arms, I just carry it to the car. But there is the occasional time where I end up having a bag, some things you can't avoid. You know, there's plastic everywhere. And things like bread. You can't really find bread that is not wrapped. Unless it's like from a little bakery, which there are none around my town that I know of. All of the plastic you collect does have to be clean and dry. So no food residue or stickiness because that will produce bacteria inside the eco brick and it'll cause it to rot and maybe explode. And then it won't be helpful for building things. So you wanna really make sure that every plastic that you put inside the eco brick is washed and dried. I know that seems like a lot of work, but having an eco brick also makes me more conscious of the types of things that I buy. I know that if I buy something in plastic, I'm going to later have to wash it and clean it. So now, even more than before, every time I buy something, I think, is it covered in plastic or is it not? And if it's not, then I'm not going to have to do any extra work. But if it is, there's just that little extra piece of work that I have to do. So that also helps me to reduce the amount of plastic that I buy. But again, some things are just inevitable. You're going to end up with some plastic here and there. You're going to need a bar to push everything down. I use this metal bar and you wanna make sure that it's taller than your eco brick so you can actually push things all the way down. So I use this one and I also use a knitting needle. However, I broke it because it's a knitting needle and it's not supposed to be for pushing things down. I do plan on getting something that's about this big but stronger, maybe like a tool or something. And also I use a little rag to help me push things. So I put it on like the top and just, you know, 
squish things down with it so I'm not hurting my hand or anything. The reason I use both of them is I use this big one to like really push everything down and if there's any empty holes or little pockets of air I use the knitting needle to kind of push some plastic into that hole and make sure everything is really packed and really well packed in there. They are both useful at least it was uh, I do have another knitting needle, but I don't want to use that one because I don't want to break it. But I do plan on getting another small tool like or thin tool like this. I think that is all I wanted to say. So let's get started on making the eco brick. I'm going to start off by giving the brick a white base by using soft white plastic bags. I know it looks like a lot, but this will get pushed down a lot. So I'm going to add a lot of white to make sure that there is enough to make a white base. I found it easiest to cut all the plastic down before pushing it down. At first it'll be hard to make everything compact, but the more you push down, the more compact it ends up getting. You're going to want to have a combination of harder and softer plastics. The hard plastics are going to be harder to push down, but the soft plastics will fill up the spaces. You can also add things like straws and other harder plastics, but make sure you cut them down first. I also added leftover hot glue from my hot glue sculptures and this bread thingy. If you look closely, the bottom is pretty compact, but there are some holes that I'm gonna fill up with soft plastic, such as plastic bags or bread bags. And yes, I am gonna use another knitting needle because I still don't have a tool to push this down and this will really help me get into the little crevices. But you gotta be really careful not to puncture the bottle. Make sure you're always pushing all the plastic down before you add too much plastic. If not, the bottom will not get hard enough. This is about halfway full, so I'm gonna measure it and see if I'm on track. This bottle specifically is one and a half liters, and I know that it has to be about 500 grams. So with 232 grams halfway, it looks like we're on track. The density range of an eco brick should be between 0.33 grams per milliliter and 0.7 grams per milliliter. So if you stay within that range, you're fine. To log your eco bricks, go to gobrick.com, make an account and fill in all the information for your eco brick, including a picture. The website gives you a serial number and you're supposed to write that with something permanent on the bottle, preferably nail polish or enamel paint. And this is what it looks like once it's labeled. This is a little side note here. Hello. So I debated posting this video because I found something out. When I first looked into making eco bricks, I made sure that there would be a drop off place near where I lived. And there were a few close drop off places. However, now that I look back on that map that I originally looked, all of those are gone. And the closest drop off place is in Africa. I'm a little bit far from Africa, so I don't think that's gonna be a good idea. So I wasn't sure if I still wanted to post this video because if somebody makes an eco brick and doesn't wanna build anything with it, it's just gonna sit there. However, you can still build your own things. Like you can build furniture, you can build flower beds. I don't know at this moment what I'm going to do with my eco bricks, but I still plan on making them. I might reach out to a school and try to see if they would be okay and would want to build a flower bed and have their students help out and have me teach them about, uh, you know, plastic consumption and the impact it has on the environment and ways that they can reduce their plastic use and things like that. But for now, I'm gonna keep making them and just keep them in my home. And as soon as I find out what happened with those drop-off places or if they will be put back on on the website, the website I was looking into was um, GoBrick where you register your eco bricks. As soon as I find another place, I will let you guys know. Look down in the pinned comment if there is no pinned comment by the time you watch this. 
I probably haven't found anything, but sometime in the future, hopefully there will be a pinned comment with more information. On the website, there is an EcoBreak marketplace where you can trade EcoBreaks, but nobody in my town is going to want to trade EcoBreaks, to be honest. However, I did find this girl who is collecting EcoBreaks, so I'm probably going to send them all to her. However, this doesn't take away the fact that we do need more EcoBreak drop-offs everywhere. The reason I still decided to post this video was so that if you do want to make an EcoBreak and make something yourself, you have this video to watch. I know I'm not a professional, I just started doing this, but it's things that I have learned in the process of making eco breaks and I just wanted to share with you guys all right back to past Maria talking about eco breaks and there you have it guys your very own eco break now remember these have to be very packed not overly because you don't want it to explode but they are bricks you know they have to be rough and tough so if you throw this at somebody it'll probably hurt so don't throw it at people I hope I covered all of the information that was necessary to make an eco break. I hope you guys can now, if you want, go make your own eco breaks. And if you do, let me know how it goes. I know the first time can be a little challenging. My first eco break was a mess. <laughs> I had to redo it a few times because I just did it wrong the first time. I wasn't sure what I was doing. But after that, it's now very easy. I can just I just do it. For me, it takes a long time to fill up one of these bottles because I don't have a lot of plastic, but there are some times that I do end up having a lot of plastic at once. So what I do is I just do a little bit every day. I spend like five, 10 minutes, probably more like five, doing it every day. And that doesn't really take much time for me. And also another thing I forgot to mention is that I don't have to take out the trash very often. Also, I do have a composter if you guys haven't seen that video. So I'm not throwing away any food waste. I'm not throwing away any plastics. There are some plastics that I do throw away like meat that came wrapped in plastic. Like those I do throw away because it's really hard to wash and make sure there's no bacteria left. But everything else that is relatively easy to wash, I keep. So my trash can doesn't fill up as often. So there's less trips to the trash can, less bags of trash being thrown out. So that is also a plus. I do like not having to throw out the trash as often and it also doesn't smell because there's no food waste in there. All right, I hope this answered any questions that you had. And if you have any more questions, write them down below and I will do my best to answer them. And this is just a little reminder that you don't have to be perfect to make a difference. You don't have to do everything to make a difference. You don't have to be 100% zero waste to make a difference. If you want to make a difference, start small. Change something in your life that will produce a little change for you, like get reusable grocery bags, or use a bar soap instead of liquid soap, or get your eggs in a carton instead of a plastic container. Little things like that will add up. Well, that is all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you for clicking on this video, whether you're a returning subscriber or you just wanted to learn more about eco breaks, I appreciate you very much. And I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.